Hello, hello, my name is Tomasz Poszedek and in this video I will show you how you can reassign any pending uh, approval process workflow task to any user. Well, basically, once you initiate a workflow and you assign that task to some users, they can navigate to approvals and under the list of received tasks, they can simply open any task that is assigned to them and then choose this option to reassign by providing the mail uh, of the user to whom they want to reassign. They need to follow some principles, uh, like for example, they cannot reassign that uh, task to themselves, obviously, and they cannot reassign the task to the user who initiated the workflow. But uh, they can do that if they are available. And of course, if the flag on the uh, start approval process action allows the reassignment because you need to be aware of as well that every action that um, that starts an approval process in Power Automate contains as well a flag that is called enable reassignment. And if you set this flag to no, then users are not going to be able to, uh, to reassign tasks using the user interface. All right, so in a scenario where this flag is set to no, or uh, if the current assignee is simply unavailable, is absent, is on a holidays or whatever, is just not is just not present. But the workflow is really urgent and is waiting for uh, for the approval process to be completed. What you can do? Well, you can use data stored in Dataverse in the environment where the task has been created to simply reassign that pending task to someone who is available, even if you are not the owner of the task. And even if the enable reassignment flag is saying no. If you're really interested in how all these um, operations, all these scenarios are behaving within Dataverse, how the approvals uh, solution works and uh, how tasks can be really manipulated using Dataverse data, then I encourage you to go to my other YouTube videos where I'm describing in a really, really details how solution, how approvals solution works in Power Automate. All right, but uh, right now let's get back to the topic. So now what I will do is uh, I'll create a third test for reassignment. Um, and as you can see, this is going to be maybe assigned to like two employees, to John and Stefan. And what I would like to do is to simply reassign John's task to myself because I will assume that John or let's let's assume in this specific scenario that John is simply uh, absent. All right, so the workflow now is running. If I switch for a moment to John's account and to his workflow tasks, you can see that he already uh, he already owns this reassignment test tree, right? Now, uh, I have created a very simple workflow for tasks reassignment. And what it does, it is simply following um, all these steps that are actually being performed in Dataverse if a task is reassigned by a user using the user interface. So first, it is waiting for several input information like the information about the approval ID, so the general uh, approval process ID, um, the specific approval request ID, so the ID of the task that has to be reassigned, and the uh, information about the user to whom it is going to be reassigned. Next, it is obtaining details about the user, uh, about that approval, and about that task which is going then to be reassigned. And lastly, it's doing two uh, more actions. So it's creating a new record which is looking up uh, the original uh, record from which it is going to be reassigned. Um, that is now going to be the new active task uh, assigned to that specific user. So the owner is that specific user uh, whose details were obtained uh, previously and is marking the existing task. So the one that was reassigned as inactive as uh, reassigned. Now, what is important in that scenario is the fact that uh, this way, no notifications are actually being sent. So if you'd like to notify a user that they were assigned a task, that they were reassigned a task actually, then you need to as well take care about sending this notification to the new assignee. 
Now, you won't be able to send the same notification as the Power Automate is sending. So with that actionable message uh, that the user is simply able to approve or complete their task straight from uh, their inbox, although any kind of notification would be highly valuable. Um, all right, and having that said, let's trigger this workflow. So now I need to provide three information, as said, and to get them, I need to navigate to approvals table. First, approvals table. So there is approval table where I need to switch to data, then to switch view to all columns. And here I need to find a record that has been created today. Uh, so 10, 10th of February, 2020, and uh, somewhere around 10, 90, I guess. So it's not present on the first page. So I'll scroll down to load more information. And hopefully it will be present somewhere here. Uh, that is possibly this row. So let's see the title. Yes, reassignment test three. So this is uh, the ID I need to copy. So that's the first piece of information I have to obtain. And then the second one is stored in a table called approval request. So where all the single records for every single task generated during the process is being stored. And here again, I need to switch to all columns. And this time I need to search uh, for this approval request, uh, for this approval ID. So I need to find all the tasks generated for this approval uh, within this approval process. Uh, all right, maybe they're on the second page. Let's try my luck. There it is. There is something. So let's try with the first row. This one is assigned to John Researcher. So this is the uh, the task I was looking for. And here I need to copy the, fro the flow approval ID. So that's uh, the second value I was uh, I, I needed. And then I will reassign this to myself so that uh, I will now be the owner of the task and I will be able to complete it, uh, let's say on behalf of John Researcher. Or maybe not on behalf, but instead of John Researcher. All right, so um, the workflow uh, has run successfully. Now, once I navigate to my approval process, uh, to my, sorry, my approval tasks uh, that I have received, I should be now able to see, yes, there it is, the reassignment test three. And then if I switch back to John's um, list of approval tasks, then John should not have this approval test tree anymore in his list. And well, it is gone. So right now, for the more if now, I navigate to send items and I check uh, to whom that specific task has been assigned. I see as well that it has been sent to myself and Stefan. So um, with that having said, uh, I think that it is highly um, useful. So you can use this solution not only to simply reassign tasks to anyone uh, and any time that you like, but you can use it as well for creating some kind of automatic substitutions. Um, you can find as well video about substitutions in the list of my other YouTube videos. However, uh, with that, you can really create um, uh, a solution that allows you to, let's say, maintain a list of substitutions. So to have dates from uh, when specific employees are absent uh, and then who is going to substitute them and then simply to create a workflow which is running through that table and is reassigning tasks uh, on the dates of the substitution and then reassigning them back to original assignee after the substitution period is over. And you can use it for possibly dozen more of scenarios that you will find useful in your business processes, in your business logics. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe, please uh, mark the video uh, as your favorite, whatever, thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, <laughs> until the next time. Thank you and bye.